We are on the brink of the greatest football weekend of the year, every year, the divisional round. And if the chalk teams carry the day, we'll be one step closer to a Super Bowl pitting the greatest self-sustaining dynasty in NFL history, the New England Patriots, against the NFL's self-proclaimed greatest franchise, the Dallas Cowboys. You want brand names? Those are your brand names. And you got to think that all the executives in TV sports are fantasizing about the possibility. Everybody's going to watch, and I mean everybody, right? Well, maybe. Or maybe not. See, if you don't live in New England, or if you're any kind of a decent human being born outside of North Texas, the chances are pretty good that you hate both the Patriots and the Cowboys. Sorry, Pats and Cowboys fans. That's what's known in science as a postulate. It just is. So the marquee matchup, the network TV dream, would pit bad guys against bad guys, and that's a problem if you count on Super Bowl Sunday and the two weeks before it to keep your mind off real life. And I do. Think of it this way. The biggest movie of the year is coming out. It's the Joker versus Lex Luthor? Amazing action sequences, compelling story with a dramatic, maybe unexpected climax. But in the end, what's at stake is which loathsome supervillain gets to carry out his diabolical plan to make everyone suffer. Great. I'd stay in and watch Anchorman 2 instead, again. No, you need a hero opposite the villain, a Pittsburgh or Green Bay, to try to save the day. And hey, once we have good guys and bad guys, if you want to root for the bad guy, I get it. I'm a Yankee fan. But we need somebody other than the Patriots to ultimately beat the Cowboys and somebody other than the Cowboys to ultimately beat the Patriots. So root accordingly, my fellow Americans. You can pull for New England or pull for Dallas, but please, I implore you, you cannot pull for both. Let's go pack. Enjoy the hell out of this weekend. Well said, Max. Thank you kindly. And for more on our final takes, you can head to First Takes Facebook or Twitter page. They all live there. Leave some comments. We want to hear from you guys what you like, et cetera. It is going to be a great weekend, gentlemen. Cannot wait for these games and can't wait to react to them with all of you on Monday. Best weekend. No question. See y'all Monday. Have a wonderful weekend, y'all. There's nothing like a little competition to get your juices flowing, right? With another team moving to town, the Rams decided to hire their head coach one day after giving Washington offensive coordinator Sean McVay a second interview. The Rams will be making him the youngest head coach in NFL history. The Rams also have the youngest quarterback in Jared Goff, so they've announced that the 30-year-old McVay will be the coach of the team. The Rams have the youngest roster in the league. Listen to this. They have just one player older than him on their roster. Unbelievable, Damian Woody, isn't it? Absolutely. How are we doing? I'm good. I'm so good. So good to see you. It's been too long. Yeah, where are you I know. Taking I, the hideout. Yeah. Hey, just a little bit. I had to step away, but you know I had to come back crispy. Yeah. yeah. Look, yeah. See that. Look yeah. at that lineup. Yeah. yeah. The line is crispy. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like always. Stephen A., I want to start with you on this. Should a 30-year-old be coaching in the NFL? No. I don't believe that, and I've got several issues with this coach, uh, with this uh, hiring, and I want to make sure that I'm clear. It has nothing to do with Sean McVay. I don't know him, um, and I certainly uh, I, I'm happy for him because obviously he worked hard. Uh, he deserved an opportunity. He was impressive enough with the interview process. This is not about him. I'm speaking in generalities here to give you an overview. The fact of the matter is he's 30 years of age. He came into the league as a wide receivers coach in 2008. He spent the last three seasons in Washington, two of those seasons since he didn't even make the playoffs. The first year, they were ranked like 26th offensively under his watch. The last couple of years, they were a top 10 offense, 10th overall, had like the 20th ranked passing attack, I mean, running attack, like 10 or 11th passing attack or whatever. These are decent numbers, uh, but certainly when you think about the people that have put in their work, the trials and tribulations, they obviously have overcome both black and white, and then you look at it from the standpoint that a 30-year-old dude wet behind the ears gets this opportunity. Um, I I just think that it's something that's, that, that, that seems a bit stretched, to say the least. It's one of those situations uh, where, where we're clearly you're asking individuals to be leaders of men. You know, at 30 years of age, some would argue you're still learning how to become a man yourself. You know, when you got guys on the squad older than you, yeah, they'll respect your authority. They'll respect, quote, unquote, the office, the position. And we understand that. But in professional sports, it gets a bit more complicated than that. And then I also it, it rubs me the wrong way because 
I know Tomlin got the job when he was 34 years old, but by and large, you see these opportunities. You know there's no way in hell uh, an African-American is going to get an opportunity like this. Uh, it, it's just something that doesn't really, really happen very often. Uh, you know, and a lot of white guys ain't getting an opportunity like this. So it just reeks of who you know, who you're comfortable with, how you were able to ingratiate yourself with them as opposed to your legit qualifications. I got a question about that, particularly when you're asking a head coach to be a leader of men, and some would argue whether a 30-year-old is man enough at that particular juncture, just based on birth certificate alone, and whether they're, in that, they're qualified to be leaders of men. Obviously, he's going to have to, it is, uh, but it just it, it leaves a lot of questions. It is an so eyebrow-raising move, especially for a franchise, that, an organization that hasn't been very good for a very long time in, in the Rams. Um, however... In terms of can a 30-year-old do it, well, it hasn't been done in the modern era, but I am curious to see if it can. Look, there is a certain age at which you can't coach. A one-year-old can't be a coach of a football team. You say the four-minute mile was eventually going to be broken, and it was, but, like, the 30-second mile will never be broken. You know, there are some ages under which no, no one will ever be able to do that. But I don't know that that's 30 for a head coach. I mean, he was 28 when he became an offensive coordinator, a very successful one, and he wowed everyone in the room in a way that you heard Mike Tomlin wowed everyone in the room. Now, Mike Tomlin at 34 was the exception, and every organization would like to find the next Mike Tomlin, a guy who you're like, who, what? How did he get the head coaching job there? And then he holds the press conference, and you go, oh, oh, okay, I see how he got the head coaching job there. I think I'd give him the head coaching job, too, if I, ran it, if I owned an organization. And McVay apparently is coming, out, coming off the same way. So is he the next Mike Tomlin? Well, there are you know, a lot of other kind of legacy coaches, you know, guys whose fathers or grandfathers, I suppose in this case, were front office types or coaches um, in the league, and that – kind of like Shula and others yeah. give him, give him a leg up. Same with McVay. Having, Mc, right, yeah. same thing. His grandfather, an executive for many years with the, with the Niners during mm -hmm. their glory days in the 80s. But, and so that gives you a leg up, sure. Um, and, and, but most of them have failed. Most of the very young coaches have failed. They're all looking for the next Mike Tomlin, I'm sure. The Rams hope they've found him. I don't think 30 years old is necessarily too young. Yeah, listen, I, I completely disagree with what Stephen A. just said. Um, the, the fact that you would insinuate that He's, he wasn't hired on his merits. I think, it, I think it's a little bit disrespectful, disrespectful to Sean McVay. I give the Rams credit for thinking outside the box. With the young team, the youngest team in the league, with a young quarterback in the L.A. market, you pair the youngest head coach in the league going, moving forward, I think, it, I think it has a chance. We don't know if Sean McVay is going to be successful. I will also say this. How many times have we seen teams hire retread coaches that still fail? North Turner. How many times North Turner has gotten a job in the National Football League and has come up lame? Wade, Wade Phillips has had multiple head, co head coaching jobs, and he's had a ton of experience, and he's failed. So this whole notion that because he's 30 years old, that he maybe doesn't have the wealth of experience, I think mm -hmm. is disrespectful to Sean McVay and what, how he went about the process of becoming a head coach to say that I, that he's this is not the right choice. I think it's just. By the way, Raheem, Raheem, Moore, Raheem Morris was 32. One, by one the way, one thing I want to add before Stephen A. Before you respond to, to that, ahead. it was he did lure Wade Phillips, who's 69. Right, so exactly. In terms of the counterbalance, say what he did. He, what he did. What he did lure Wade Phillips who's 69, so in terms of the counterbalance of age, there is, there is going to be a veteran presence on that team as oh, a defensive okay. coordinator. Let, let, let me explain something. Damian Woody, mm -hmm. you believe I was disrespectful. Let me say this. I don't care. If that's how it is, that's how it is. So, so, you know, call, accuse me of being disrespectful. Mm -hmm. Let me be clear. Mm -hmm. This man is coming from a team that did not make the playoffs two or three years that he was the offense going. It ain't his fault. I understand that the offense was decent. Ain't his fault. I saw Deshaun Jackson on that squad. I saw Pierre Garçon on that squad. I saw Crowder on that squad. I saw Matt Jones on that squad. I saw Alfred Morris before there. I saw Kirk Cousins there. I, 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 I'm looking at it like, you know, we got Jay Gruden. This ain't Bill Belichick, and this man was working under Bill Belichick. This ain't, this, ain't, this ain't somebody of that level, of that magnitude. I have every right to question his credentials. Now, I'm not rooting against him. 
I'm not sitting there and telling you that he can't coach. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is when you are that much of an unknown commodity and it is that much of an eyebrow razor because of your age, your youth, and your minimal experience to some degree, there are dudes that have had more success as coordinators that can't get a sniff. Yeah, so but, how but the hell Steven is it that you Tomlin, get and you're 30 Tomlin, years old? Mike I don't Tomlin think it's disrespectful got, got for me to ask at, that question. Mike Tomlin got hired at 34. So is the difference for you the four years between 30 and 34? How young is too young? That's well, the what question. I'm saying to, uh, that's, we'll find that out. But I guess what I'm trying to say is I'm looking at where he's coming from as well. I'm looking at the fact that two of the last three years. Steve, hey, no wait, 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 wait. You mean to tell me that the Washington Redskins didn't have one of the best offenses in the National Football League Not when last it year? counted. Uh, not no, when it counted. No, no, we got to look at the whole body of work, Stephen A. I we agree gotta with look that. At the, don't, just, don't, just just cherry pick, don't just cherry pick certain hold moments. Hold we got to look at the whole body of work. And when you look at the Washington Redskins, they had one of the best hold offenses it. in the National Football hold League. It. And when he took over, Did they you didn't. Fly for, hold on, whoa, 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 You didn't find yourself asking on several points. Don't let me get some Redskins fans up here now and ask them. There were not numerous times this year that we found ourselves asking, where were these boys? Offensively? No, we, McVay took not, over again, a team that was not good offensively, and now they it, are good offensively. I mean, he took them from bad to good as an offensive coordinator. Okay, we'll see. Listen, what I'm saying to you is this. He's 30 years old. Okay, and I your don't point? See, and your point I is? Don't see, I don't see a resume that's that profound that warrants taking a chance on the 30-year-old. Yeah, I don't but see what that. About, well, He's what about, also been I don't around professional that. football his entire well, life. Well what, about, okay. well, what about Mike okay. Tomlin? Wasn't Mike Tomlin right. a, a defensive coordinator for one year with the Minnesota Vikings? Yeah, and like Mike, and when he, before, and when he before, came out, they were questioning came, him, too. Before he, came, before he came, became the head coach of the Pittsburgh Steelers, did you have, and, the, did and, you have the same questions about Mike Tomlin getting the head yes. coaching job? Yeah, huh. actually, actually, yes, I did. Okay. I was happy for him. Hold on. I was happy for him because there's a limited number of African Americans we see getting the opportunity. But I certainly had those questions. But you know what helped me answer it? You know what helped me answer it, Damian Woody? The Pittsburgh Steelers. Because there's been three head coaches in over 50 years, practically 50 years with these boys. Yeah, Chuck No, got Chuck No to Bill Cowher, Bill Cowher to Mike Tomlin. And so as a result, because it's Rooney, because of the Rooney rule, I agree because with that. of all the things that it encompassed and what the Rooney family played in that role, a uh, Mike Tomlin hire, although questionable, made a whole Stephen bunch a, of I sense. I agree with, with that. Sean in McVay, fact, you got questions. In fact, I can ask the look, question. McVay, McVay wowed in the room, apparently, the right. way Tomlin wowed in the room. Right. The difference is to be fair, not only is he a little bit younger, but, the, the, you know, he, not only is he a little bit younger than Mike Tomlin, but the difference is the organization. You know, Mike Tomlin was a mature guy and a leader playing for the right or, or coaching for the right organization. So your problem is Mc, with the, with the I, Los Angeles Rams. I think, I think that, yes, yes, I think Stephen A's point is fair here on two accounts. One, it's just unlikely that someone this young is good. When you look at a lot of the other examples, and I mentioned them earlier, they didn't pan out. Mike Tomlin is the exception. So the odds are stacked against you in the first place. And secondly, what kind of a situation are you walking into? Tomlin was walking into a good, stable organization with a great franchise. That's not what McVay is walking into. He's walking into something more iffy. But that doesn't mean, Stephen A., that, he, that, the, that the kid didn't deserve a shot. You know, I, 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 just, whoa, 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 whoa. I just think that, I, it, you know, I just think that this is an antiquated way of thinking that, you know, the NFL, well, he needs to have the, you know, he needs to be this D coordinator for a long period of time. And, you know, he has to pay his, pay his dues to a certain amount and then become a head coach. I give the Los Angeles uh, Rams credit for first, thinking first outside all, the box. First, first and of trying all, something candy. different because clearly first it wasn't first right. First of, all, couple, right exactly. first of all, couple of words of advice to you, Damian Woody. What? If you like your if you like your job, refrain from giving the Rams credit after Jeff Fisher was there. You know, don't get me started with that. We we gotta question their judgment. That's number one. Number two, less like when Mike Tomlin got the job, there were questions. If Sean McVay goes out there and does it, we're not going to have those questions. But today, we have every right to ask. Those are viable, valid questions that are being asked about him. It is not disrespectful to ask at this moment in time about him. Absolutely not. He hasn't even put together his staff yet. And you already, I don't give you a already, damn. And you already shooting him, him down. All right. I haven't even put his staff I'm together yet. I'm not shooting yet. him down. You are shooting him down. I'm asking a question. 
You're shooting them down. I'm asking a question. I, I said what I said, and I mean what I mean. I got questioned. 30 years old, coming okay. from the Redskins, Stephen they make a, a not playoffs two or three words. years, you a head coach? Damien, thank Please. you. We got to keep it moving. We got five Please. new head coaches in the NFL. The jury's still out on all of them. Coming up, Des Bryant has a chance for redemption this Sunday. When he and the boys take on the Packers, we know he'll be throwing up the X, but will he be the X factor in this one? Plus, Michael Irvin on the show yesterday, he had some words for Sass. Take a listen, and we'll let Stephen A. react next.